I zoom in to Kistinil 27, near Cavadoro, to virtually wander around the cobbled alleyways of the medieval city, a once called home. In the lower right corner of the screen, the yellow pegman refuses to enter street view. All he sees is crumbling paint. He's probably right. Crumbling are the walls of broken homes, potentially deadly. Pegman, tell me one thing. Do you have a home? From Google Maps, you can zoom in and see the old Taco Bell on the corner and the liquor store across the street. Now, you can be halfway across the world, look up home, and see the faded blue trim that frames the house you grew up in before there was internet, before there was dial-up internet, before there were personal computers, you were virtually disconnected from the world if you weren't at home. Where do I go when the search engine box can take me anywhere I please? Past the church of St. Pantelaimon as the sun is starting to set. Then off to the library with the indoor glass garden at Aristoteles I in the medieval city I once called home. Home is a spot on a map that is surrounded by borders. The streets set up small perimeters bordered by suburbs, bordered by cities, bordered by counties, by states, by regions, by oceans. Google Maps changes borders depending on your location, but this isn't really news. In the cracks of childhood, sorrow and distress, a part of me still wanders around the old town. No help from Google Maps. Memories of sea and pebble, we once called familiar. When you look up home and zoom in and in and in, you can see the narrow winding streets painted, painted in vibrant blues. I smudge the morning and turn it into night to visualize once more the ruins of an island I once called home. Maps have always done this. The drawing of borders is a political affair. Google Maps just has the technology to make cartography less permanent, more flexible, a business built on appeasement. When you look up home and zoom in and in and in, you can see the borders in place defining where you cannot be. Thank you.